Okay, everyone, I think we're going to get started. Um, if you could just, um, I just want to mention a few things before we get started. If you have cell phones, please turn them off for the ringer down. And also, um, please kind of keep any conversation you have amongst yourselves quiet because it does interfere with the recording because um, this is being recorded on CTV. Uh, so if you could just kind of keep quiet. Um, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Laura Tuman. I am president of Concerned Citizens of Montauk. And you may all be saying, Montauk is not in Southampton. Why the heck are you here? Um, and it's really because um, all of us on the South Fork are facing the same issues resulting from these inadequate old cesspools and septic systems. So in Montauk, we're having the same types of harmful algal blooms that you're having in Southampton. And we're having the same kind of uh, decrease in our shellfish, in our eelgrass beds, uh, because of this excess nitrogen, which is produced by our uh, septic systems. Uh, the other reason why CCOM is here is because um, last year, a CCOM and in partnership with Group for the East End, which we have a, a designee here, Jen Hartnagel from um, Group for the East End, as well as Citizens Campaign for the Environment, we received some grant funding from Suffolk County to help promote these programs at both the town and county level to help educate homeowners on the need to replace their old systems and to educate uh, homeowners on the financial system assist, uh, the financial programs available to replace the systems. And so while we do have some water quality issues and concerns, we're actually very lucky that we have a town and a county who have, who have acknowledged how important uh, this, this issue is and who have actually allocated significant financial resources to help combat this program. So while we're in a, a, a bad position, we're actually in a good position because we do have our government officials behind us. Um, so what I did want to mention before we kind of had it all before I hand it over to our Suffolk County Legislator and Town Supervisors, just want to give you a rundown of the, the format of the event. So we're going to hear from both uh, county and town officials about their, their two systems, uh, the two um, programs that they have. And then I'd, I'd just ask for you to kind of keep your questions to the end. We will have a designated Q&A uh, session at the end. So please write your questions down. If they pop up into your head, just write them down and you'll have an opportunity to ask them of the panel up front uh, afterwards. So uh, bef I'd like to hand it over to uh, Suffolk County uh, Legislator Bridget Fleming, who does represent this area, just to give a few opening remarks. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> if you tell we're in church. Um, I'm Bridget Fleming, and I do represent this district in the Suffolk County Legislature. Um, the district runs from East Mauritius to Montauk and includes Shelter Island, so certainly Southampton, East Hampton, and the, the communities in Suffolk County and on Long Island, really in our region, that are on the very forefront of environmental protection. So you should be very proud of yourselves. You're certainly not. Um, isolated in what you're doing. The impacts of what happens in East Hampton and South Hampton really have a ripple effect um, all the way up the island. So I'm very proud to represent you uh, amongst the 18 districts that include, of course, Babylon and Islip and Smithtown and Brookhaven, places that don't always have the environment and environmental protections front and center. So you're really doing wonderful work out here in East in um, Southampton and on the East End and it's it's resonating up the island. Um, in the 1930s Greenport produced 2.5 million bu bushels of oysters per year. It's about 60 million dollars in product uh, in today's market value at the same <coughs> excuse me at the same time and later, the Great South Bay um, hosted 6,000 jobs for clamors um, who, who harvested hard-shelled clams. Um, and in 1985 was the first appearance of the brown tide. And since that time, that remarkable um, set of marine industries has seen a first a precipitous and then a steady decline. I see some folks who are from this area, born and raised, uh, shaking their heads. It's a, it's a truly alarming um, circumstance, and yet it's a circumstance that we've recognized, we've studied, and uh, we've developed solutions to, and you here are part of, or potentially part of the solution. Um, the, 
it's estimated that since 1974, there's been as much as a 36% loss of tidal wetlands in Suffolk County. So it's not just the economic production of either the recreational waters or uh, the marine industries fishing and, and uh, shell fishing, but also environmental protections, the coastal resiliency that we're going to have to rely on more and more as these extreme weather events and uh, sea level continue to rise are being degraded by nitrogen pollution. And as Laura pointed out, and first of all, let me congratulate Laura and the concerned citizens of Montauk and Kate for being on the cutting edge again and doing this education. I was so proud to co-sponsor the grant uh, that brought them here because we really need these things and congratulations on the great work that you're doing. Um, but, but at any rate, the, these extreme weather events that continue to threaten our shores and are going to get worse um, are mitigated by coastal wetlands. There's an infrastructure function that the coastal wetland performs when it's healthy that can't be performed when the nitrogen um, pollution is eating away at those wetlands. So we've discovered that the nitrogen pollution is coming from outdated septics. It's a very unusual situation. 360,000 individual septic systems in residential properties throughout Suffolk County, and many of them are failing. Even at their best, these septic systems do not pull the nitrogen out of the wastewater before it reaches uh, surface waters and potentially groundwater. So critically important that we start to upgrade. Uh, Suffolk County has made a huge investment, as have the towns um, under the leadership of Councilman John Bouvier and Supervisor uh, Jay Schneiderman, who are here with us, and congratulations on your hard work. Thank you. Um, under, the, under the leadership of these East End towns and the county executive, Steve Ballone, who really uh, made it a point to reverse the nitrogen pollution. We have, first of all, sewered where we can sewer, where there's political will to sewer. We recently just saw two huge referendums pass up the island. Hundreds of millions of dollars are now committed to sewering where it's possible. But let's be realistic, here it is not possible. We have small um, sewer programs that are being um, advanced, like in West Hampton Beach. But by and large, we need you all to upgrade your systems at the individual level or maybe even community cluster systems. So we've done the kind of uh, investment in time, regulatory upgrades, and now in financial investment that helps you, we hope, will help you and will encourage you to replace systems. In fact, we do know that, that it is happening. This, the uh, program has been remarkably successful. I know that the East End and East Hampton and South Hampton programs are leaders by far in the septic upgrades that have been taking place over the past year and a half. Uh, but I can tell you uh, with regard to the county program, despite any concerns that may have arisen in the recent past, you had in January 40 um, uh, systems, February 58, March 60, you see there's a steady uptick, and so far in April already 23 systems. So we continue to see uh, folks getting on board because there's so much commitment at the, at the government level and at the not-for-profit level. We now see it in the developers and in the homeowners themselves. I, I am so grateful to you for recognizing what an alarming circumstance we have here with nitrogen pollution and what uh, real change you all can make. It's happening and I'm so happy to be able to support it. So I look forward to hearing uh, from the installers and um, if I can be helpful, my office is on Washington Street in Sag Harbor. Please feel free to walk in anytime. Give us a call. We want to be helpful. It's a big, big deal and you all are doing great things when you upgrade your systems. So thank you very much for coming and thank you, Laura. Thank you, Bridget, for your leadership. Uh, next, I'd just like to introduce you to Southampton Town Supervisor Jay Schneiderman to just give a few opening remarks, uh, and then we'll hand it over uh, to both the county and town programs. The presentations will actually be very short, so don't worry. Um, I do want to mention that there are um, the septic, the county approved IA septic vendors in the back outside so please feel free to go talk to them at any point you won't hear directly from them at the podium but you will have an opportunity to talk to them outside either during or after the program so I did want to mention that so without further ado uh, Jay Thank you, Laura. Thank you.
Thank you to CCOM, Concerned Citizens of Montauk. And Laura's just not a Montauk rep. She's also a resident of the town of Southampton, right? which is Sag Harbor area. And CCOM does great work out there. Um, they've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Almost 50 years. 50 years Almost year. 50 years. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's great. A couple background questions. How many of you, you have already installed a nitrogen removing sanitary system at your property? <laughs> there we go. We got one. How many of you are considering putting in a nitrogen moving, removing sanitary system? Great. And how many of you are required to do it? How many of you are thinking of doing it voluntarily just to do the right thing? Wow, that's, that's amazing. And, and we're here to help. Town of Southampton wants to help you do it. We do have a new law in place. It's not as restrictive as the East Hampton law, which requires all new construction and all substantial expansion uh, to put in these systems, even renovation, substantial renovation in East Hampton. In Southampton, we took a more measured approach. We are requiring these systems if you're within what we call a two-year travel time. So if you flush a toilet, if it would take two years for that nitrogen, that's a component of your waste to reach the surface waters, you're in that two-year window and you are required, if you're building a new house, you're putting a large addition on your house. Um, and there's a couple other circumstances, but we took it a little bit slower than East Hampton. Um, you know, who knew that flushing a toilet would be such a problem, right? We all, we all love our bays. We love our harbors. It's why we live here. Right? We moved out here, we, some of us go clamming, some of us go fishing. We understand the importance. Um, the county has been regulating sanitary, residential sanitary systems for you know, certainly longer than my life. Um, but basically the way they regulated them is to take that waste and to get it back into the groundwater table as fast as possible. Right? To get it, to, they managed it mostly for pathogens. Right? So they put it in a hole in the ground, let the water percolate back into the groundwater table, and, and that was it. That's not a natural process. That doesn't break the nitrogen down. To break down the nitrogen, you need air, you need bacteria. Um, so it became a problem, and we started to see nitrogen levels going up in our bays and harbors, and with it, we saw algal blooms, um, and that, algal, the, that algae started blocking the sunlight from our bottom plants. It started decomposing and pulling oxygen out of the water column. Some of it was highly toxic. We had to shut down broad areas of our bays. And uh, we needed to do something, and we really didn't have the resources. And what was, uh, I think, remarkable is you guys voted you guys voted on first on the CPF tax, the transfer tax, which is generated among the five East End towns over a billion dollars now for land preservation. And a couple years ago, you guys voted to amend that program to allow up to 20% of that money to be used for water quality projects. And the town has committed a significant amount of our portion, what we receive, toward this sanitary rebate program. So we are providing grants up to $20,000 per system. Um, you match that with the county's program, which is, I think, around 11000 You can probably pay for the entire system. There are some um, income thresholds in our system, but they're pretty generous. So uh, if you make less than half a million dollars, you're going to qualify for something. Um, up to $300,000, I think it's... Uh, is it 100%? 100% up to $300,000, and I think it goes down to about 50% at half a million. John, do you remember the other threshold? And, and then 25 it even, at 25 at a million dollars. So if there's anybody in, in the room who just filed your income tax and you had a million dollars as your income, you still get something. So anyway, but it's a, it's a great, it's a, it's a great engine for helping to change these sanitary systems and bringing back the health of our, our bays and harbors. And uh, you're going to get presentations, I think, from some of the installers. So you learn about some of the systems. And the county is here as well, right? So yeah, you'll get that perspective. So uh, I'm happy to join with the county. Uh, this is J Councilman John Bovier, and he's been very involved. We're using some of this money to do other water quality projects, changing drainage structures. Um, looking at all kinds of ways to reduce pollutants in our bays and harbors. John, can you, you want to say a quick hello? Sure. Hello. <laughs> um, just the other part of this is that the, uh, we have the 20% rebate program, but of that, we're also using that to help those denser areas put in cluster systems. We're buying properties where uh, we have high density so that in future 
those those neighborhoods will able to put in cluster systems so you can get an economy uh, an economy a savings uh, when you when groups of people buy these systems together for instance through homeowner associations and things like that so we're trying to be creative we're trying to hook uh, West Hampton Beach up as an example to the Gabreski uh, sewage treatment plant and where those kinds of things make sense that's what we're, we're using those monies for but the first priority goes as as the supervisor said to the zero to two travel zones new construction Construction, substantial reconstruction, and, and we hope to expand those programs in the coming years. So nobody wants to mandate anything, we, we, and I'm really excited to see you guys all here. They're interested in, in wanting to do this because I think that's how this works, that we all work together to solve a common problem. So thank you. Thank you, Legislator Fleming. And Janice Shear over there, quiet, is, is the, the main thrust behind this effort, and we couldn't do it without her and a lot of staff in the town. So thank you all very much. Let me just lastly say how encouraged I am to see so many people turn out. This is, this is really wonderful. And so many who are doing this voluntarily, they're really stepping up to do the right thing for the environment. So thank you all. We're going to jump right into the presentations. Uh, first, we have Justin Jobin from Suffolk County. Again, we're just going to let him go through his presentation, save your questions for later, and then we'll head it over to uh, Janice Shear from the town of Southampton. So, Justin, thank you. All right, thank you all for coming out. I'm Justin Jobin. I'm the Environmental Projects Coordinator with Suffolk County Department of Health. I've been with Suffolk County for about three years now. Prior to that, I was um, an environmental scientist managing these systems in Rhode Island for, um, I have about 20 years experience with these innovative alternative systems. So these systems, I hate the term innovative alternative because they're really not alternative and that they're not cutting edge. They're, they've been around for a while, it's just Suffolk County's been a little late to the game. So now we're playing catch up and I'm glad that we have such a room full of people um, interested in doing the right thing. This presentation is geared for a longer presentation, so I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly. We're all aware of the nitrogen loading into our bays and surface waters, approximately 70% um, from septic systems and cesspools. So we'll go through this. This is the slide that really pops out. 360,000 septic systems in Suffolk County were the large, most densely populated area of septic systems in the country. So no place uh, beat Suffolk County in terms of densely populated um, areas with septic systems. So that's a major problem, especially because we're a sole source aquifer. Everything that we flush essentially goes into the ground, water, and ultimately is what we drink and then makes its way out to our bays and surface waters. I'm gonna skip, everybody knows the difference between a cesspool and a conventional system, so I'm gonna talk about these IA systems, but I do wanna mention we have a new regulation starting July 1st, 2019, and surprisingly, it took 40 years to get to this point but you can no longer replace, as of July 1st, 2019, you can no longer replace a cesspool with a cesspool. We're finally phasing out the use of cesspools in Suffolk County, and it took 40 years to get to this point, but it's an exciting time. So basically what we're looking at is conventional septic systems don't remove a lot of nitrogen. They remove maybe 10%. Uh, so what we're seeing come out of um, standard septic tank effluent is 60 to 80 milligrams per liter. Innovative alternative systems get down to 19 milligrams per liter, which represents approximately a 70% reduction in total nitrogen. So the, these systems basically have um, their modular systems that we're talking about today. They have a septic settling compartment and a treatment compartment and then go out to some sort of leaching structure, whether it be a leaching pool or a um, uh, leaching field. And um, the county's taken a five-pronged approach. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I'm just gonna say over the last four years, the county's been very busy um, between visiting other states and um, creating legislation, passing legislation, three different um, pieces of legislation passed from the legis through the legislature. So it's been really busy and a lot's going on. And the next phase is our sub-watersheds plan, which will be released um, this summer, which is basically going to show for each water body in Suffolk County how much nitrogen we need to reduce and how much of that can be achieved through septic systems. All right, so our provisionally approved systems, we have six technologies. We have the HydroAction, FujiClean, two Norweco technologies, um, SeptiTech and Renko. All the manufacturers, representatives and distributors are out in the hall, visit them, talk to them, get as much information from them as possible. The three on top 
um, represent the smallest, um, most popular systems because they're the size of your average septic tank. So figure no more than five feet wide, 10 feet long, um, pretty small systems. The ones on the bottom represent larger systems, which might be better for the homes that really get beat up in the summertime. So there's this, <laughs> that option as well. But what we're seeing right now is the ones on the top are the more popular, and the ones on the bottom represent the larger systems. and. Um, that's that. As far as performance, they all performed in our testing period below 19 milligrams per liter. You can see HydroAction was the best performing system, followed by SeptiTech. Um, and then the others were all around similar to uh, close to the 18 milligrams per liter. All right, so I don't have a lot of time, so I know I'm talking really fast and going through this as quickly as possible, but I'm really about the questions and getting to everybody's questions. So our septic improvement program launched on July 3rd, 2017. I don't know why we picked July 3rd, but we did, and we staffed up in a holiday week, and we answered calls, and believe it or not, phone call after phone call after phone call came into the office on July 3rd, and we've been very busy ever since when this program started. So. It's hard to see this graphic, but basically our septic improvement program consists of a county grant of up to $20,000. There's a base grant of $10,000 um, plus two incentive grants. One of the incentives, and we'll make this PowerPoint available so you don't have to um, break your phones trying to take a photo or anything like that. We can get that sent out to everybody. But the base grant of $10,000 plus an additional $5,000 if you put in what we call a pressurized shallow drain field, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. We also have a $5,000 incentive to low to moderate income property owners. So if it's a household of four, I believe if you make $93,000 a year or less, you would be entitled to that additional $5,000 incentive. So it's really a, um, a great incentive to take advantage of. And then in addition to that, we're very lucky that the state of New York, through the State Septic System Replacement Program, has made available um, $10 million out of $15 million statewide. So 67% of the statewide uh, money was awarded to Suffolk County. So we are now able to couple the county grants of up to $20,000 with a state grant of up to $10,000. Um, so there's a total of up to $30,000 available. Now you start coupling that, and Janice will talk about um, Southampton's program where they have rebates of up to $20,000. Now you can combine these for up to $50,000. And what I'm really here to talk about to the installers in the room, which some of them are still out in the hall, but I'll get to them later, is that just because there's $50,000 available, doesn't mean that every job should cost $50,000. <laughs> and really serious about, we're looking at every price quote that comes into my office and we're scrutinizing it and beating it up and um, they, can, they can attest to that. We're making sure there's not price gouging on the east end just because this money is available. There are difficult sites on, in Southampton and East Hampton that deserve or need the full $50,000. I'm not going to deny that, however, not every site is, and we really need to make sure that the money goes to the, the homes that need the money, and we're not um, raising, essentially raising prices on the east end. So that I'm really adamant about stressing that fact, and we are going to hold installers accountable on that. Um, for those who need $60,000, there is a low interest loan available, which isn't very popular on the east end, but it's through Community Development Corporation of Long Island, 3% interest over 15 years, um, Ten thousand um, dollars of grant money, or loan money rather. So I mentioned pressurized shallow drain field. I don't want to get too technical tonight, but I do want to mention this because we're now treating wastewater in really creative ways. When I can get or bring in treated wastewater from any of these systems that are in the hall and it looks like a bottle of Poland spring water, then you can get rid of it in really creative ways because it's nice and clean and you can start putting it into the root zones of the plant. So pressurized shallow drain fields are drain fields that go into the root zone of, of the soil, um, the top eight to 12 inches of the soil horizon. And it's pressurized to pump doses of water out to it in small slugs, 25 gallon slugs at a time. It's feeding your lawn throughout the day um, in slugs of treated wastewater. 
And what that does is it does a few things. One, it's great for high groundwater sites because you have more separation to groundwater. It's great for areas where we're worried about sea level rise because you have higher separation to groundwater. But it's also great because nothing loves nitrogen more than your, your green grass and your yard. And if we can get it into the, the zones, we can reduce the amount of fertilizer you're also putting on the, the lawn and really get a, a double uh, benefit out of these systems. So that's why we have a separate $5,000 incentive for these pressurized shallow drain fields. The image here shows a conventional high groundwater system on the right hand side, retaining wall system mounted up, um, $50,000 system, does nothing to treat nitrogen. Photo on the left is a pressurized shallow drain field, nice green grass, and um, much less money. The system costs $28,000 to go in the ground, so for less money, you can get better treatment and you get nice green grass on top of it. So it's a win win win. Grant eligibility criteria, which I can't read from here, but I know it by heart. So basically, everybody is eligible for a grant under the county program as long as. Um, there is no outstanding taxes, um, there are no tax liens on the property, the property can't be in foreclosure, and there is income eligibility. There is no income cap, but if you want the low to moderate income incentive, then you need to be able to give us your most recently filed tax return so we can verify that and make sure that you really are in the low to moderate income bracket. We do have priority areas. They're very similar to the town's priority areas in the zero to two year. Um, go through that. We went out to the industry. We have fixed rate pricing. So when I said that we're going to hold the industry accountable with pricing, we have numbers to compare it to. We also have all of the information on our website, reclaimourwater.info. It has the cost of the electricity for these systems that range anywhere from 70 to um, $200 a year in electricity. Maintenance is up to uh, $300 a year. The first three years of the system are included in operation and maintenance, and after that it's the homeowner's responsibility. Um, so all that information is on our website. The grant application process, I'm not going to go through it other than you can sign up on our website. There's, it's all done electronically. You can enter the portal, enter your username, password, and it doesn't take a lot of time provided you have copies of your certificate of occupancy and your homeowner's insurance and your most recent tax bill. If you have those three items, you can upload it pretty quickly. Um, the good thing about our website is it'll look up where you're located. It'll tell me if you're in a priority area and it'll tell me if you qualify for the low to moderate income tax um, or low to moderate income incentive of $5,000. So it does everything automatically through automatic lookups. Did I see? Uh, no. I'm sorry, can we just save questions to the end and plus just you have to go to the microphone. Okay. Thank you. All right, so that's our, at the very end, you can upload documents through the web application. For those of you that aren't computer savvy and want a paper application, we have paper applications. I can get anybody a paper application. We rank, we score the, the applications, and we issue a grant acceptance packet with tons of information. Um, and just I can read it here, I guess, look up over here. Um, when it comes to the numbers, we've had over 1,600 people register for information on the program. We've had 811 just registered and haven't moved forward, and we're looking to get those people to move forward. We have 337 grant certificates that are currently active right now in process. We have 193 that are pending review. Um, we're waiting on some documents from them. We have 234 that haven't completed the applications yet but are almost ready. Um, and then installations to date since July of 2017, we have 81 installations. But we have 106 that are all approved, ready to go, and any day now could go in the ground. So. Um, and then there's 19, we've been getting about 19 a week lately coming in. Um, legislator mentioned how, really, the, how um, the demand in the program has been really taken off since January. We expanded the program in January to be available to just about everybody. It used to be just single family residential year round sites and we, we blew the doors off of that and letting anybody in the door. So we're giving out um, money to, to just about everyone. Once we opened up that um, portal and, and we created on January 22nd, we started the new program. We've been um, 
inundated with applications just coming in the door. So our busiest month was last month. This month we're in pace to top last month. So that's really great that so many people are finding out about this and getting involved. So here is the slide that basically shows our uh, program. The bottom line was our, our previous capacity of issuing 17 grants a week. And now our capacity, uh, 17 grants a month rather, now our capacity is 80 grants a month that we, we want to get out the door. We want 1,000 systems this year in the ground. We're making the case for the state and the governor just recently announced more money through the state septic replacement program. We want to make the case that Suffolk County um, is going to take advantage of this money and we want all the money that they're willing to give us and we can't do that if we're not spending the money and now we can make the case to them that the demand is here in Suffolk County. So interest in the program has obviously been um, pretty strong in the East End thanks to the CPF um, rebates in addition to the state and county program. We have uh, Southampton um, is edging out Brookhaven right now with a lead of 86 grant certificates issued. East Hampton's at 53. Shelter Island also has a rebate program there at 13, which is pretty good for a small place. And um, it's been uh, an interesting road, but now things are really starting to move forward. We have over a thousand um, systems that have been applied for in Suffolk County. There's about 202 in the ground and approval to construct 500 systems. So 500 systems are ready to be installed. 308 are in the review process. This is really starting to take off. The most popular systems right now have been Hydro Action, Fuji, and Norweco Singular. You can see Norweco Singular um, has 251 systems. Hydro Action 312 and Fuji Clean at 368. So they're all relatively close and going to wrap this up really quick. We do have average costs. The average cost of the program has been $22,000, um, including engineering. However, in Southampton, the average costs have been higher. They've been twenty-four dollars to $26,000. So again, we're keeping a close eye on that. I don't want to see those numbers go up any higher than they have. All right, so taxability of grants, the elephant in the room, I'm prepared to address it head on. <laughs> So our program was designed basically after the state of Maryland. Um, we did our due diligence and designed a program where the money does not get paid to the homeowner. The homeowner assigns their grant to the installer and the engineer. And the thought process was that the installers and engineers would then pay taxes on the money that they received and report that money as income. So the county tax council issued an opinion confirming that the county should issue 1099s to the people who received the money, not the homeowners. So that happened. Uh, but the responsibility for generating those forms comes from the Department of Audit and Control. The comptroller is a separate independent elected official who had a different opinion and decided to issue 1099 forms directly to the homeowners instead of the contractors. In some cases, the contractors got 1099s. In other cases, the contractors got zero dollar 1099s. So it was a little shaky there. And um, there, there's, it's really had us scratching our head as to why, um, despite um, legal opinion, that this is happening. What we've done moving forward is um, we confirm that installers, every installer in the program has confirmed to the county in writing that they are paying taxes and declaring the money they received um, to the IRS and paying taxes on that money. So we've asked the um, comptroller to rescind the 1099 forms that he's issued since reached out to the IRS and we're hoping an IRS letter ruling will come in the next three months. There's been some talk, I know, with me potentially getting Senator Schumer's office involved to expedite the ruling. But bottom line is, hopefully we'll have an answer to this and be able to put this to bed within three months. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of people that have been hesitant moving forward. Um, I've talked to a few people, the financial implications to them, and it's unfortunate, but I'm optimistic that this will be resolved in the coming months. And um, it's unfortunate that it's happened in the busy season when this program is about to skyrocket and it kind of made us take a step back. But we're dealing with it, we're aware of it, and um, all we can do is get it resolved as quickly as possible. 
All right, so what do these systems look like? You can talk to everybody out in the hall, they'll show you what the systems look like, but they all have control panels and air vents. We want everybody to be aware of that. You can tuck them in into um, some areas. This one from the photo, you can't even see the hydro action air vent. You just see the two lids, um, the air vents right under the window with the control panel. Um, we have, here's a Fuji system. Look at the nice green grass. That nice green grass is not because she dumps a ton of Scott's fertilizer on her yard. That is a pressurized shallow drain field. So she is using her treated effluent to um, <coughs> treat the wastewater, send it into the root zone of the plants and fertilize the grass. Um, so it's really, I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that and a nicely fertilized yard. She hasn't used her irrigation system on it on this site since the system went in. Uh, here's a Fuji system before and after installation. <coughs> here's a SeptiTech system. You can't see it because it's tucked into the landscaped area. The other thing is their green grass that's also pressurized shallow drain field there. It's not um, irrigation and, and sprinkler lines and fertilizer. So that's all I had. went through that as quickly as I could. I don't know if I did the 15 minutes or not. But all our information on our website, reclaimourwater.info, my information's there, feel free to call. We have dedicated staff to walk homeowners through the process. Um, if you have any questions, Anna Marie and Emily will be glad to, to talk to you, walk you through the application process, walk you through the construction process. If you have any concerns, if you're not happy with the engineer, with the installer, call us and we will help to mitigate that situation. So again, dedicated staff, we're really focused on this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. Justin eats, sleeps, and breathes this stuff. So he's super knowledgeable and really friendly and helpful. So if you have any questions, do reach out to him. He also did bring some pamphlets that say reclaim our water. I think there's some outside and on some on the front table, so be sure to grab one. I also want to mention uh, we do have a Southampton Town trustee who is in the room, Ann Walker, who's here. So I wanted to acknowledge that she was here as well. Okay. Um, moving on quickly, Janice Shear from the Town of Southampton will go over um, the Southampton Town program. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having us. Um, we're so happy that you're here and we have so much interest. Um, my name is Janice Shearer. I'm the Assistant Town Planning Director in the Long Range Planning Department and we view this as a long range plan. Um, and as part of the, um, the, the referendum that happened, so, so the state law chapter 551 of the law of 2015 was enacted to extend the CPF program to the year 2050. And at that time that referendum uh, vote was can we use this 20% to, uh, for the water quality as Supervisor Schneiderman was talking about. And it had an overwhelming yes response and in, in doing so before the referendum we created this plan, this water quality um, project plan. And so the idea is that this facet of, of our community preservation is water quality. I mean, this is our identity. This is our, our livelihoods in many cases, our, our life, our resort industry revolves around the water. So it's very, very important. And um, basically it, it comports with our vision goals of the comprehensive plan, all the zoning and, and things that we do are all uh, for health, safety and public welfare. And if anything is for health, safety, and public welfare, it's the quality of our water. So this kind of goes through our vision goals, which are really to improve the quality of water here, perverse, preserve our diversity of our biotic communities, um, our endangered species, our wetlands, you know, protect and restore our freshwater tidal wetlands, um, as legislative Fleming was talking about. And so this plan is really a, a larger picture of what's going on here. And it, we broke it down into kind of buckets of, of re, it's kind of like reduce, reuse, recycle, but instead it's reduce, remediate, and restore. So the idea is let's reduce the amount of nitrogen going into the system, remediate the systems that's, that have been impaired, that have this what we call legacy uh, nitrogen, where it's still moving through the groundwater and it's heading toward the bays and it's, it's, it's still there from a long time ago. So we have to come up with ways to remediate that and then restoration in terms of our, you know, our aquatic habitats and, and also the way that we um, interact with these habitats. 
So the goal, as I said, is to reduce the nitrogen here. So really this part of what we're doing, this, this IA system septic replacement program, is all fits under this reduction bucket. And that is to, um, you know, reduce this groundwater and how we created this septic rebate program that we're really excited that people are interested in and we really want to get it rolled out as much as possible and Justin and the county are doing a fantastic job. Um, and we have a water quality advisory committee, which Bud Dunbar is sitting here in the audience. He's also on this committee with me. And uh, we are trying to also come up with long-term plans like uh, some people earlier said, like John Bouvier, where can we put cluster treatment systems so we can treat as a whole, and where are these IA systems more appropriate? Typically, the residential areas that are, you know, you have an acre, a half acre lot, though, you know, those, even a quarter acre, those are the real ones that you're going to get IA systems. Other ones where we can find parcels where these could fit on. Um, like a cluster treatment that can do a whole neighborhood, we're looking to do that as well. Um, so the, our plan, if you look at it online, or I have cop a copy here, it, sh it has maps about where these priority areas are. And they're, they're um, based on a bunch of different factors. You know, is there well waters? Are there cesspools there? Um, small lots, shallow depth to groundwater. They maybe uh, have frequent flooding and inundation, FEMA, flood zones, um, soils. So we, we map this all based on these criteria and the job of uh, Ross Baldwin and the GIS team helped us do this here in the town. Uh, or areas that are listed as uh, nitrogen impaired, meaning those systems already have too much nitrogen. So putting any more in there is not a good thing. So we need to take it out. And that's the idea here. So the town, oh, excuse me, the town adopted this septic rebate and incentive program. And the eligible areas are these high and medium priority areas that are mapped. You can go on the website, type in your address, and it'll tell you right then and there. You can call us, we'll let you know. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out if you're in an eligible area. And if you're an eligible property owner, it's basically anybody that owns it. And even if it's your second home, it doesn't matter. Um, so the, the um, there is in our program a uh, income eligibility. So like the supervisor said, $300,000 or less, you're getting 100% rebate. Anybody who's over that, you know, it, it breaks down until you get to a million dollars. And then after that, you're on your own. And I'm sure you can handle it. Um, the we also have a mandate, like we were saying, in the high priority areas, there's certain things, new residential construction, substantial upgrades, and 25% or more floor area, um, which we're not talking about basement, you know, renovating a basement. We're talking about new floor area. Uh, those things we, we would require because the idea is we're not going to do business as usual. We're going to move into this new way of doing things. And so that's um, the hope with the new construction. And so we have these brochures that I hope you take one. With, they're a little outdated in that they talk about the county program. It was before um, they got the additional money from the state. So that's wrong. But we'll fix that. And this kind of goes through how to apply. And so the first step is to, like I said, type in your address and determine if you're in a higher medium priority area. Then we have an application form, which is on our website, or we can give you a paper copy if you call the CPF office. We can mail it to you if you need one. And you would then give your uh, documentation, you know, your tax returns to the CPF office. And what, what this does is that they make sure you're income eligible, but they also encumber the money for you. So you know at the end it's waiting for you. That money is yours. So you're going to spend this money up front. This is a rebate system. We're going to pay you back. Um, or you can elect on your form to have someone else get paid like the installer. We're working on the situation where we're going to be able to pay certain vendors and installers directly and then the homeowner. But there's some things where the homeowner, you're kind of like the GC of the situation and you might have to hire a tree guy. And you might have an installer and you have an engineer. So you pay all these people and give us their invoices and then we pay you back. That's how it's working right now. Um, so you would then step three, say you're eligible and you get the money encumbered. You then go get your installer, your design professional. And this is where Justin and his team really are important because that, now you're dealing with the county. You're putting in plans. You're getting all that approved. So basically, 
you know you're good with us. The only thing on our end that you're applying for is an electrical permit because that's the only way we can get you into our system to track what's going on. It's because in, in our in Southampton town, um, to put in a sanitary system does not require a building permit. But these systems have an electrical component, so we require an electrical permit. But that captures you into our system so we can track you, we can run data, we know what's going on. Um, and so you, that's the only part that's really like the um, administrative side in the building department. So we don't have anything to do with it necessarily until you need an electrical inspection, you get the sign off, and then you have to hand in all your stuff saying the county signed off. And then you submit your, your invoices and we pay you back. So I want to show you these are, because we're tracking this, this is the most recent map of all of your neighbors and all the people have done it so far. And the town has paid um, $436,566 to date. And right now we've encumbered for people $1.9 million. So that's almost 100 new systems. 100 new people have, have secured their payments and are going to be coming through the pipeline at the county. So you can see it's like a wide swath. All the areas are, are, you know, have stars, a lot of them. Anyway, I wouldn't say all, but a decent amount. So we're getting there. And I, and I really encourage you to do it. One of the planners in, in town, she, uh, she did, it, did this and she said she, I could use pictures of her house. So that was as it was going on, as the system was going in. And then the bottom picture is done, you know, cleaned up. She's, it's all, you know, like you wouldn't it seems disruptive at first, but she, she was ecstatic. She said it was great, you know, and I encourage you to talk to people who've had it done because that's the best way to know, if, you know, what you're in for. And, and we think that these installers and the people committed to these systems are really doing a great job. And the county is really keeping up with inspecting everything and making sure things are done correctly. And we're really trying to process these as expeditiously as possible. So you have a year to get it in the ground, you know, from as far as our money is encumbered for a year. If you can't get it in a year, we'll ex give you an extension, but most people have been able to, you know, soup to nuts, get it done and be paid, you know, in a year. And the most t waiting time is just dealing with permits and design professionals and stuff like that. So you're, it's not like you're in a year of disruption. That part's the quickest, shortest part. Um, so we're really hoping that you give it a, try give me a call actually and justin as well check out our little brochure and our website and our project plan and we welcome your comments and participation thank you, thank you. thank you janice so now what we're going to do is i'm going to ask uh, justin actually bridget and janice both all three of them to come up here um, if you have a question, please line up here. I'm going to turn the podium so you face them a little bit. But I need you to get on the microphone so that everyone on TV can also hear you as well. So uh, if you want to just form a line or come up, um, I don't need to be herding cattle, but I'm sure you guys are. are good. So if you have questions, please just line yes. up here. Um, and the question, if you know who the question gets addressed to, um, you can focus at them. But I understand some questions may actually prompt a, a response from multiple um, <laughs> folks up here. So thank you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Greg Fabiszewski. Uh, I have a question. Why the county grants are not available for new construction on vacant land? That's a great question. I don't really have an answer for that other than the thought process was to make money available to people who need to upgrade their existing systems. Um, that was really the thought of the, pro the, the process. And we also mimic the state program, and it's in the state law that um, vacant lots are basically not eligible for the program. So we want to mimic the state. We didn't, it would get really clunky if we had a lot of um, requirements that didn't mesh with the state program because we're trying to meld these programs together. So because the state doesn't allow it, um, and because we're really trying to get the existing systems upgraded, that's why we focused on that. Okay. And I, now I have a question for the town. Uh, what is the process of uh, applying for the grant from the town? Uh, do, I ha do I apply when I apply for a building permit, or I apply after the septic system is completed? No, you would apply 
any t now you come with your tax returns to the CPF department and they will encumber the money for you. They'll give you a letter that says you're eligible and this money is here with your name on it. So when you get to the end, you know it's there. Because the first come first ser serve type of thing, you know, what if someone else got some before you and then we said, oh, we have no more money or something, you know, you don't want to get in this and not know that it's there for you at the end. So we made sure that e you have to apply to CPF first, fill out the application, give them your tax returns, and they're going to give you a letter that says you're eligible and this money's here for you at the end when you're done. And that's how, how we do it. And then you go through the building department just for the electrical permit. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, uh, my name's Bud Dunbar. I'm on the water quality committee that Janice talked about. And I don't have a question, I just have an um, encouragement to, to everybody here that um, what we're trying to do with these, with these nitrogen treating septic systems is remove nitrogen from the water. And if you look at it, it's like $30,000 for a new system and we were gonna remove about 25 pounds of nitrogen per year, okay? So if you see other ways that you can remove nitrogen from the water, come to us. You know, the, the committee that Janice is talking about is gonna dole out something like $10 million this year for projects that pull nitrogen out of the water. And, and honestly, we're, we're short on projects. We need people to come forward and say, hey, we could, you know, we could do this at this school or we could do this at that, that facility. And, um, you know, a lot of you are here because you voluntarily want to put one of these systems in to get the nitrogen out of the water. And, and I say, good for you. But, you know, there, there are thousands and thousands of pounds of nitrogen out there that we can get. And we need ideas. We need people to come forward with projects. Um, I know, you know, the other thing is my neighbor, it, God bless him, he's a great guy, but every year some truck pulls down his driveway with about two tons of nitrogen on it and it gets spread out all over his lawn and he's right on the bay. And, you know, th there's, there's a ton of nitrogen coming into this system <coughs> still. And, you know, I'd like to find ways to cut that off as well. Thank you, bud. Uh, I'm from East Hampton uh, Springs and uh, I couldn't I know there's a meeting in East Hampton in a couple of weeks but I will be out, uh, out of town and I don't really have a question I just have such a concern about this 1099 business the very day that Justin put me on the list of 109 people 106 whatever ready to go that was the day I learned that this was going to be income that I could not deduct. Well, can I just say that it's not, it isn't necessarily, it has not been decided that it is income. The program was designed very carefully, as Justin pointed out, both with regard to legal uh, advice and uh, advice from uh, CPAs. Uh, that the that the program had received and because programs like the Maryland program which has been in place for 10 years are functioning exactly this way without any question from the IRS so as as Justin pointed out we are very confident that um, you know we're going to get through this um, unfortunately the county comptroller Mr. Kennedy is a separately elected official. I chair the Ways and Means Committee and I sent him a letter actually last week listing the various projects where we know the vendors or the installers have already paid the taxes. And I said in these specific instances we're asking that you rescind the tax, rescind the 1099s because it clearly people are going to be paying taxes twice. You know, paying on the same grant, paying taxes twice, and I don't think that's the outcome that anyone wants. There is a decision being crafted by, uh, we believe, by the IRS now. And so, but, you know, we have a year until the next uh, tax period, and two things. One is that we will, we, we are fighting this, what we think is a mistaken approach by the comptroller. I certainly am, and we're confident that we're going to be able to make progress there. On the other hand, I just got off the phone before I came here with the water czar, the 
chief deputy county executive for this program. And he and I, as the chair of Ways and Means, a member of the legislature, are committed to ensuring that the program adjusts in a way that will mitigate the burden on homeowners if we're not able to get some kind of reasonable reaction from Mr. Kennedy uh, by the time it matters. I know a lot of, of the folks who are impacted now have been encouraged to file extensions and that may happen so that we can resolve it. But certainly now that we've, April 15th has come, uh, we, we believe that within the next few months, as Justin said, certainly before the next filing deadline for income tax, we will have this resolved. And it is very much, there are a number of things that we've addressed. Uh, for instance, there's a requirement of the county grant program that the homeowner uh, carry a design fee, uh, you know, to pay the design professionals, because the county executive was very interested in ensuring that people have skin in the game. Uh, that may be something, if we go back to the state legislature, we may be able to adjust that and count that into the grant instead in order to try to undo some of the harm that Mr. Kennedy wants to do. But I, I do think there is a commitment there um, and, and that we are going to find a resolution to this. It's a mistake what has happened. It's wrong what's happened. He is a separately elected official, but we have a number of avenues to try to address it, and I think that we certainly will. As you know, I put my installation on hold. Yes, and, and we're hoping um, that that doesn't. And I find that to be really outrageous that I have to do this. My property is on the wetlands of Akabonic Harbor. And, um, and of my, course, you know, it doesn't affect the town programs, right? The town, town program the town is grant handled. to me runs out before three months is up. Right. No, but what it, the, the issue with the 1099s being issued under the county program, that's, that was done uh, by, with regard to the county grant program. Uh, Southampton program does not actually the 1099 goes to the installer um, it goes to whoever receives the rebate in whoever East, receives East the Hampton rebate. yeah yeah East Hampton will send the 1099, the 1099. so that's yeah. up front so and you we may end up adjusting for that but we will uh, we will support the homeowners to the extent that we can to minimize the burden that this sort of crazy decision on his part uh, has crazy imposed on indeed. homeowners. Indeed. <laughs> but uh, they will extend their grant to me. Um, the, East Hampton. I'm not sure that what the town of East Hampton would do. Um, we work very closely with them, and Angela, I can get on the phone with Melissa tomorrow and get a solution for you, and I'll give you an email and let you know. Thank you, sir. It's a good example of how responsive Justin is once you're in the pipeline. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Tony Darrow. I live in uh, Noyak. I have a few questions. Number one, uh, you keep mentioning a Mr. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. it, it almost sounds like there's some kind of political sparring going on. Is, 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 is this becoming a political issue? Well, I don't want to ascribe motives to anyone. Somebody, a very wise person once told me it never pays to question the motives of somebody else's actions. We're scratching our heads um, on, on why the separately elected comptroller is take, you know, has taken this step. So I really think that's about as far as we can. We're not certain what the motive is. It is not clear and we're hoping that we will resolve it. Does this mean there's gonna be perhaps some kind of pushback on this from other, other members of a, of a political faction that don't want to see this happen? I mean, is there, is there gonna be, I, I, you know, it's a hard question to answer, but is, is, is there gonna be any political aspect to this that's gonna hold up the process? No, I don't think so. I you mean, don't the think thing so, is that, that John Kennedy is the comptroller. It's he who makes the decision whether to issue that document or not, and he made that decision. But with regard to the folks who are running the programs, you see them f completely on board, East Hampton Town Board, South Hampton Town Board, the county legislature, as Justin pointed out, has passed three major pieces of legislation, including amendments that increase the grant awards here, and we're Republican and Democrat, so I don't think I, I don't think that's that should be a concern. The 1099 we need to resolve. 
Okay. But beyond that, I don't think that there's, I don't see any place where politics could get, could interfere. A few more questions. Uh, you agree with me? Yeah. yeah. Our, our, our house and property is a part of a life estate with my wife, myself, and our two daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, there are four owners of the property. Uh, do they have to send in applications, or I mean, what, is it going to be each one of us uh, who have to send in the applications for this? Because so there are basically four owners. I can speak for the county program and the state program, and. You would not have to, only the one application per property. However, when we look at the deed, we would see that it's a life estate, and we would see who is listed, and we would put that, amend the application to have all those names, and all of those people would have to sign the grant agreement. Okay. That's, that's the, how it works. So the state grant agreement and the county grant agreement would need to be signed by all the legal owners on the property. Well, right now I'm getting along with them, so it should. <laughs> <laughs> you could charm them into anything, Tony. <laughs> Once. <laughs> uh, are there different applications for the town and the county? And uh, the, so, in other words, it's not just one application will take care of everything. Okay. We would love to do a single kind of uniform application, but right now there's two. And um, when you come through the town, we, we can check off like, oh, county grant. And then we can deduct, like if you're getting, let's say $10,000 from the county, that comes off your town because you're gonna pay twice for a system. But there's things the town grant can pay for that the county grant can't. So they work nicely coordinating but you, together. you both be aware of yeah, yeah because when you come into our app, uh, application process it's best to kind of go through the county septic improvement program first mm -hmm. but you don't have to you can still encumber the money go to the county get their grant you know you can do it in whatever order you want but we do take it off the top so okay. to speak. and I do want to mention on that note that the legislation that was just passed on December 18th allowed the county to enter into agreements with the town to streamline the process. So we've been very busy getting the new program up and running, but eventually we want to come to the table with Southampton, East Hampton, and Shelter Island and have some unified process to try and streamline it even more. As a matter of fact, I offered that amendment based on the questions that Southampton had about that very question. So they have to get the technology up to speed, but they're moving in that direction. Okay, last question. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if if there's an emergency with my, I have a septic system that's uh, 20, 22 years old. I mean, which works fine now, but uh, if something were to come up where I need to do any kind of repair or even replacement on this system before I install anything new, uh, would I be allowed to make uh, a repair to the system that I have? Could I, if, if a contractor came along, the NORSA came along and said, I can't repair your septic system, you need a new septic system. Uh, it, will I be allowed to do that or is it going to be no septics at all? I can speak to that. We're actually, I was in a meeting today where we have new standards for repair and replacement and catastrophic failure. So we are working on a new process that if you want to put one of these IA systems in the ground and your system is collapsing or is in major catastrophic failure, you can call as long as you're using a contractor on the county's list. Um, you could get the system installed and still qualify for the grant and loan program and go through it that way and do it without the pre-approval process. The engineer would need to be on site, um, meet with county staff, and they would go on site. They would say this is where the system's going, and then they would install it, and then the plans would be submitted after the fact because of the catastrophic failure, and we need to address that. So we have this drafted. Um, there's going to be public meetings. It has to go through the whole secret process, but we're very close to having that process. In the meantime, I would recommend installing something, however, making it friendly so that you can, all you have to do is plug in your nitrogen removal system um, and attach to your new leaching pool. So there are ways to do that, and I'd be more than willing to, to talk to you about okay. that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. That's also something to bear in mind that Justin and his team are extremely responsive to particular site constraints and the sort of challenges in different locations or no two locations that are exactly the same but they will give you advice hi my name is james i have a uh, property in a high priority area that it's a difficult property though small about 0.2 of an acre uh, i applied to suffolk county in february 
Uh, I haven't gotten much information back. Uh, and now into, I applied to Southampton uh, beginning of April. And this is the situation, and I'm not sure how flexible you are. So in terms of structure, so the location that makes most sense to put it in is in the front, but I'm being told I may actually have to dig down a 12 foot by 20 foot trench, 30 feet down. That's very concerning. Uh, not only for the cost of it, but also because the actual logistics of trying to do that on a small property. So, and I've got an engineer that's working on it and he's coming back with another proposal. But it seems like a, me a better give and take, maybe even a conversation about Absolutely. ideas of how to handle this would be a lot better. We have dedicated staff and we've been trying to get the word out to engineers who will go out to the site, address the site with the engineer before plans come in the door and really brainstorm what's going on. Um, if you have to excavate that deep to sand, then it might make sense to do what we call a perk test and design a leach field based on the perk test. It's failed. And so what's happened is, is that the, the plan has been submitted. I have it here yeah. actually. And there, we had, we were asked to do the perk test after it was submitted with the conversation that if you don't do that or if you don't get a passing perk test, you're going to have to do what we just talked about. Right. And that's, that, that is going to be, you know, you're talking about pulling out a lot of soil, replacing it with a lot of sand because um, there's clay underneath. So uh, that, we're going back with a proposal that has been passed in other areas. We're talking about a, a WIC system. Yep. But it seems like it would be a better situation if we just sat down and talked about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and that's, well, this is what happened. So I called up, and because the engineers, the applicant on it, they, I had to talk about the situation generalities. I couldn't get specifics. No, if you're part of the septic improvement program, give me a call. We'll, we'll cut through the red tape and get it. it it's because, it. so when I'm doing it, I'm looking at a very large bill and, and none of the grants are being confirmed. So I don't know if I'm going down a path that I'm never right. going to be able to complete or whether or not there's actually going to be the funding to take care of whatever needs to be done. Yeah. Let's right. get let's get the your Let contact information and yep. we'll that would be great. And there's one other point. So I have a front area that's that's complicated, but I have some space in the back. But I'm being told that they won't accept it in a, in a real location. So yeah, that's that's um, an old policy. That's no longer the case. So. Okay. Why don't we'll talk yeah, tomorrow? We, we, give me a call. We'll touch base and see. Thank what you we very can much. Do. Yes. Did you give your contact information? It's, if you <coughs> grab the flyer here, my number and email and phone numbers on that. Um, when you talk to Anna Marie, just tell her that I talked to you today. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good evening. <coughs> um, thank you for holding this. I have some practical nuts and bolts questions. What's the smallest parcel that one of these systems can be installed on? Oh, I've designed these things in my Rhode Island days on a 2,000 square foot parcel where the septic tank was in the basement and um, we barely had room in the backyard. I don't recommend that. I don't advocate for that. That's pretty but small. But if basically any, you can engineer anything. Um, where does it become financially uh, unfeasible um, to do that? Where, when is it? Um, prohibitive to do that and that's the question you have to ask and, and really if you're at a quarter acre lot there's no reason we can't fit anything um, we, we've done quite a few on 7,000 square foot lots um, done hundreds again Rhode Island done hundreds of these if not thousands on 7,200 square foot lots okay thank you for that answer um, two other nuts and bolts questions one is what's the annual maintenance required for these systems and the second one is are there some things that you won't be allowed to put down your drain once you install one? Right, so that's that's interesting and each technology is different. Some are more robust at handling chemicals than others and you should really talk to the people in the hallway as to what's required in maintenance. Um, some of these don't have a lot of submerged parts. Um, the ones that do, if there's pumps that are submerged, they need to be cleaned. If there's any um, sprayers that spray a media, then it needs to be checked to make sure that it's aerating properly. Um, and then the, there's enough oxygen flow through the system, they would check all of that. Um, but as far as what you put down the drain, we've seen systems that 
a guy put in over 80 ounces of bleach into a system and we've been monitoring it every month for a couple of years now and we saw that the system rebounded within two months. So we're seeing that these bacteria can come back pretty quickly. The one thing, and everybody tries to, to do the right thing using uh, essential oils, spearmint, peppermint, eucalyptus oils, those are natural antibacterial agents and they can kill the bacteria in the tank. If you're using a lot of um, essential oils, then you don't give the bacteria a chance to get going in the system. That's the only thing I've really seen um, affect the technology. Um, other than that, most of the, your standard household cleaners in moderation will be fine through the system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify about new construction. I was under the impression that the town of Southampton required the new septic systems as of January 1st, 2018. Is that true? In the high priority area. So in the high priority areas. It's not all new construction. It's new construction in that high priority area. And the high priority area is? It depends on where you are. And it's mapped. So there's all these various maps for every hamlet. And you'll see that they have, they're outlined in red. Okay, so that's and, online. And they are subject to change. Yes, there are all these maps. This entire plan is online. And you could just type in your address and it'll tell you okay. if you're in that area. Um, the other thing is, what about homes that are family homes? I know somebody else mentioned about multiple owners. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the question. It's family owned by um, three siblings. So R says eligible property owner is defined as any person, estate, trust, beneficiaries of an estate or trust, partnership, member of a limited liability corporation, corporation, or other legal entity which owns residential or non-residential property. So, so I like them. And actually that's, hey. the le <laughs> that's in the county legislation as well because there's another amendment that I sponsored and I got the language from, from Jana. So we have the exact <laughs> same language. So it's, so it's income from three families then? Um, oh, for oh, income eligibility. If you're looking, okay, so income. No, oh, I see. You're saying do we have to add in the incomes? Since it's three owners. Well, for Is us, it? there's no income I guess uh, so. cap. It's That's only that you may not be uh, eligible for the additional grant for low to moderate income. Okay. But there is no, we, we um, actually eliminated the income cap for the county grant <coughs> altogether. For, this, for the town grant, it's a million dollars okay. income. Okay. So I guess right now, I, I would have to go to the town attorney to get like a, you know, or someone to, okay. or the chief building official to construe the law to say, is it an additive? My sense is it probably is, but we'll have to find out for sure. But you would be eligible for the county grant. For the I county mean, one. Okay. For us, it would be up to a million dollars. So if you each had $200,000 income, you'd be fine. Okay. And what if it's truly a summer cottage and it's not open? That's fine. That's a great question. That's fine. It's, it's not a year-round home. It doesn't have to be a primary residence? Not no. Anymore. We made those amendments. We never had it as that because this is a second home, you know, economy here. We all knew that. But the county had that restriction but took it off. So One of the things that happened with the county grant is we initially thought we had $2 million a year to spend. And so we wanted to target the places where it would be most effectively spent. And then because the, system, the program was so robust and statewide, you know, really rose to the top, we got this big grant of $10 million and we expect we'll be getting it again as long as we can continue to move uh, grants through the pipeline. So when we learned that we got this additional $10 million from the state, we opened it up, we changed the eligibility criteria to expand it significantly so both of the things that you've described are within our program okay so the first thing that I would do would be to apply to the county 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 yes. and then but you can still put give us yeah come and do the fund encumbrance to the town well I'll try <laughs> <laughs> well good it's so That's important right. well it, it's yeah it's hard it's, it's the it's right hard thing enough. to do getting two other people to agree on any oh, kind of ask uh, Tony to do it for you he's very charming <laughs> <laughs> Tony Garrow look him up <laughs> I've retired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyone else like to ask a question? Um, yes. Hi, I'm Bill Porter from Sag Harbor. Hi, Bill. And hi, um, Sag Harbor now mandates it for all new constructions April 1st. So um, I'm now assuming Sag Harbor wants to be part of Sa Southampton Town. Your, your grant is for Sag Harbor also. And not, not the Suffolk grant. County. The um, town, town grant. The is it town. Yeah, all for the incorporated villages? Yes. Okay. CPF is for the whole town, including the incorporated villages, because anybody who, anyone who, <laughs> who purchases real estate pays that 2% transfer tax. Okay. So that's why. And I'm now going through the health uh, department process, um, and I would assume we could be finished in a year. But is, um, is, there, is it now a good time to do it, uh, apply for the grant in Southampton at this point? Or do I have to wait for, for a design? Uh, I also have contracted for a design for the... Um, have you applied to get the funds encumbered for yourself? No, no. Okay, yeah, you should do that. Even now? Even okay. now. Yep, okay. do that now, so that way you're, you're in the queue. And if for some reason I'm delayed more than a year, there is there an extension process? There is an extension process. Okay. Yep. Thank I have you. a stupid question. Do you go to the counter in the building department, no. or do you go? You go to the CPF office in Hampton Bays, okay. across from Scotto's. In Hampton. It's Bay. like behind that oh, okay. guava restaurant, Next kind to of, the like where the Vince Canusio Park is. Brendan knows where that is. Um, there's a CPF office there, and you bring your tax returns and the rebate form from the um, website and they will review that and then they're going to send you a letter that says okay you're in so that's you want that's like step one for our grant i have a question if you have two cesspools on your property do you get grant just for one of them or can you get the grant for both or does one turn it to turn into one <laughs> this is a very complicated question if it's if you can combine them into one that's the way to go if it's a two separate buildings on the same lot um, you can get only that the county grant is only per parcel however the state grant is per septic system so you could get t up to twenty thousand dollars from the county but you could also get up to twenty thousand dollars from the state because they'll pay per system so that's doesn't really one answer house with two systems it's like one Okay, that oh, would it's only one building. building. It's one building. Well, you may find when you upgrade that you have you can go to you one. combine them and you'll have one system. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Pauline, and I'm from Hampton Bays. Uh, new resident here, only about a year and a half. Welcome. Um, so I know I don't know how old my septic tank is. Uh, I guess I will investigate to find out if I am in the area because I'm by West Tiana Bay. Mm -hmm. I'm very close to that, only like a block and a half away from that. Um, my question is, I believe you had mentioned you have to have some skin in the game. Mm. Uh, so I'm a little confused with the two different grants. And like, what does your grant pertain to? Like, what does that cover? And yours basically covers the septic tank as far as um right theirs will be like the system and installation costs and and ours will pay for your engineer designs and the like say you had to remove a tree or you have to fix the the landscaping directly associated with what right place okay. we will compensate you for that you know whatever you had to pay so if oh. you had a you know tree removed because it was in the way and you had to call a tree guy, we will, you give me the invoice, I mean, you give Adeline at CPF the invoice, we will okay. reimburse. And, and yours, is, yours is the one that covers the extra 11,000 or? Ours is, ours is up to 20,000. Up to 20,000. And 20, then the, the county has a 10, and I'll let you speak to what right. the county Right, so the, the county program, $10,000 base grant with two incentives, one $5,000 for pressurized shallow drain fields, which is good for high groundwater areas, another $5,000 incentive for low to moderate income, plus the state, which is $10,000. So depending, most people would come to the county and state and walk out with uh, about $20,000. Okay. Then you'll come to us and we're gonna say, okay, how much did you get from the county and the state? Take it off the top okay. and then, oh, you needed this for your engineer, you needed this for your landscaping, whatever, and we, the town will cover that cost. So it's great, the synergy that the things they won't cover, we will. So, and the more we can use the state and county money, the more we'll have 
left over for everything else. So, so basically, I, where would we get a list for, like, say, the engineers, the electricians, and things like that that, right. that comply with your program? So all the installers are on our website, reclaimourwater.info. Go to the septic improvement page. We have costs from um, engineers and installers. So go there. A lot of information. I have some flyers up here that you can grab if you're interested. Okay. You, just to clarify one thing, when, when I said that um, the county program requires skin in the game, remember there are 10 towns in Suffolk County. There are only three towns that have CPF programs that are supporting these grant programs. So that 20, 2000 to 2500 that the county executive wanted to see the homeowner contribute in the CPF towns can be covered okay. by the grant. So since you're in Southampton, you could use that. They can't do that in Smithtown or Babylon or Islip, but they could do it here in Southampton. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. When do you foresee that it will become mandatory for those houses in the high priority areas to actually change their systems? Yeah. I mean, some of them are like really old. Are you talking about in the town of Southampton? Yeah, out we in did an analysis, on the water. And there's over, I think, over 15,000 that have probably have cesspools alone, like all along yeah. the coast. Yeah. And, um, but we want to coordinate with that, with the health department, because how do you really do that with enough time? If we were like, everybody have a year to, you know, that would be crazy. Like, you wouldn't be able to get it done. So we amortize it over a certain period of time. And what's that period of time look like? How much time is that? And that's a matter for the town board to, you know, we're trying to advise them, but we are looking at it. I don't know, you know, if the county legislature would, would mandate all that, but in the town, we are looking at it, but it's just a matter of how much time is really fair for someone to be able to get in the queue and get it done, mm -hmm. but also how much time do we really have mm -hmm. for like, you know, the, t these ecology totally collapses. Yeah. Do I have, so it, do I have till the end of the year? <laughs> Do you be, have? You're not going to be mandata mandated anytime soon in terms of cesspool, but it is on the horizon as to how to plan for this in a in a reasonable way, where everybody wins. That's our goal. It it definitely makes sense to take a hard look at whether you're eligible and whether you want to do this because sooner or later we're going to have to upgrade. We're a watershed basically, you know, from one side of the moraine to the other and everything the 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 water that we drink comes from under our feet there's mm -hmm. no other place where it comes we have you know a sole source aquifer mm -hmm. which could also be impacted by nitrogen so to take it seriously we all have to sort of step up and do that so if you're eligible for the grant program now is the time to really do that yeah and the best incentive is when the money is there because it's sooner or later now. it'll be well there's only this much left and there's yep. only that da, da, da. so it's just better to get in now while there's this abundance of help okay. going on. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I have one more question. He's back. Yeah. He's going to uh, solve the problem for the sisters <laughs> in the other property. Partially. <laughs> uh, the income eligibilities for this, uh, would, would it also include the income that of my daughters? Uh, I mean, would it be a combined income of everyone who's in that life estate? Or would it be just be no, I think it's the residents of the The resident. Property. Okay. I could be wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't sorry It doesn't really aside. speak to how that's worked out in the income because we have an eligible property owner. Because that brings up another problem. Nobody lives in the house year round. Right. Well, it's, a, it's the kind of, it, it, if it was a corporation, that some people have called and said, well, I'm this corporation and it's I make resident. millions and we're resident. like, no, you're not eligible. Mm -hmm. So. You know, but a lot of people in Southampton, believe it or not, own their homes as an LLC. So, and they may or may not be eligible. So we'll have to take a look at this, it's a great question. See, these things come up when you start talking about them, and so we'll have to find out for you. The, the definition, uh, or the, the section of the law that defines the income eligibility does speak to residential owners. Okay. Um, and oh, it's the adjusted gross income of the primary owner. <laughs> it's the primary. Well, owner. We, we so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we got to look at it. But yeah, we'll, uh, no. But I, 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 I think you know, I don't. I don't even know if my name is on the deed anymore. I mean, I think. Uh, 
Well, you're going to have to find that out. That's, find that I out. mean, this is the sort of thing. This information has to be gathered. And it's pretty, the, the, the online application kind of walks you through the questions that you're going to have to answer. Yeah, it does say, based upon the adjusted gross income of the primary owner as reported on the property owner's latest available. I'm the primary resident, but I may not be the primary owner. Right. There's, you, I think you need to talk to the program folks about how they're parsing that out. Meaning CPF? Yeah. The thing, the, yeah. Well, bear in mind, now you have the county program and the right. town program. The town program has income limits, which are, which are pretty generous. Yes. The are. county does not have income limits. The only way that that would be relevant for the county program is if you wanted to try to get under the um, <coughs> middle, the low to moderate income uh, extra funding. But the, major, the, the main funding is available regardless of income on the, that's one of the amendments that we made county. in order to get the money moving. And but for CPS low does have limits. But they're pretty generous. We do. Yes. So, yeah. But if you call the CPF office and... Uh, do you work there? Would I be able to get a hold of you? You can call me here in town hall. You're, you're in town I'm hall. I'm here in town hall, but the um, person's in... I'll Thank give you, you my card. Great. And we'll CPF it people may be the better people CP to talk to. So CPF is Lisa Combrink and Adlin Affont, and they will also help. So we'll figure it all out for you. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I guess we're over. Everyone's leaving. I know. <laughs> You lose people after an hour and a half. Thank you. Anyway, for whoever's left, I just want to thank you for coming. I think it's going to be well with your time. And I also want to thank Justin, Bridget, and Janice for their time this evening and all their dedication to the program. They do this day in and day out. So if you have any other questions that come up, please reach out to both the county and town programs. And thank you again. Have a good evening. Thank you, thank you all.